Winter survival out here is challenging for me, but bison don't struggle at all. They're adapted to life in Canada's hinterlands, no matter the season. Historically, bison could be found in Canada from the grasslands and woodlands of the prairie provinces to the eastern foothills of the Rocky Mountains and up into the rugged Yukon. There are two subspecies of bison found in Canada, the plains bison and the wood bison. Although both are often referred to as buffalo and are similar in appearance and behavior, the two are different in some ways. Plains bison prefer open fields and meadows, whereas wood bison prefer more northerly woodlands with large wet meadows. Bison are Canada's heaviest land animal and can stand over two meters tall. Mature wood bison males weigh around a metric ton, like a small car, while the slightly smaller but stockier plains bison males weigh in at about 750 kilograms. Plains bison have larger beards and look like they're wearing a lighter colored fur vest, while wood bison have a more prominent shoulder hump. These powerful beasts are definitely built for Canadian winters. They use their massive heads to plow snow out of the way in order to reach food hidden below. And their shaggy winter coats insulate them so well that snow often doesn't melt when it lands on them. Bison can live up to 40 years in the wild, and large healthy adults have few predators. Wolves, cougars, and bears prey mostly on young or old herd members, and humans also hunt bison for food. A bison's diet is influenced by where it lives, but can be made up of grasses, sedges, leaves, lichens, twigs, bark, and other plant matter. Like domestic cattle, bison regurgitate their food and chew their cud before finally swallowing and digesting it. Historically, bison were known to move hundreds of kilometers in search of food throughout the changing seasons. Large herds of bison greatly influence the ecology of their habitat. Plant growth is encouraged by their grazing, the soil is fertilized by their waste, birds and small mammals line their nests with bison hair, and some creatures even make use of the shallow watery wallows which are created when bison rub themselves on the ground. Bison mating season begins in July, with bulls challenging each other for breeding rights and making bull roaring noises that can be heard for kilometers. After nine months, between April and June, a calf is born. It starts life with an amber-colored coat, which will darken as it ages. There was a time not too long ago, before European settlement, when bison herds thundered across the plains of North America from Mexico to Alaska in such high numbers that it would be hard to imagine they could ever be depleted. In fact, for thousands of years, the indigenous peoples who shared the land with the bison built their very existence around the herds. Indigenous peoples made use of every part of the animal. All of my essential gear that I used to survive out here had an equivalent version that was acquired by harvesting bison. Horns were made into cups, spoons, arrowheads and medicine. Bones were made into knives, shovels and bows. Fat was rendered into soap and candles. Hair could be turned into rope and pillows. Stomach liner and bladder were made into water containers and medicine bags. Hide was made into moccasins, buckets, ropes, snowshoes, clothing and shelter. Meat was preserved and eaten, and even manure was used as fuel for burning. After the arrival of European settlers, excessive hunting of millions of bison for their meat hides or for sport nearly caused their extinction by the late 1800s. And when the bison almost disappeared, the Plains indigenous people lost much of their way of life. Since about 1900, bison herds have increased in numbers thanks to conservation efforts, but populations are still not close to what they once were. Bison have lost much of their historic range to agriculture, urbanization, and other human development. And the wood bison is currently considered a species at risk. Bison also face other threats like diseases such as brucellosis and tuberculosis and crossbreeding with other subspecies. Today, most bison either live in protected areas or are being raised on private ranches. And remember, no matter where you live in Canada, wildlife is close by, so get out and see it.